Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have the solemnity of St. Joseph, a glorious feast. St. Joseph, as we know, is the a patron of the Universal Church. And we see how his role as the foster father of Jesus and the spouse of Mary is so important. This is why we had the gospel today of the Annunciation, where we have the angel coming to Mary, Our Lady, asking her to, would she consent to be the mother of God, <clears throat> and how the son that would be born of her would be the son of the Most High, and his kingdom would last forever. This is so all important, the greatest event in the history of the world, the coming of Jesus Christ. And of course, it's only fitting that this gospel be read today because today is the, the, feast, the solemnity of St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus and the husband, spouse of Mary. What a wonderful blessing it is, my dear friends, to realize how important St. Joseph is. And to do so, we'll try to take a look at his life a little bit. And at first, the first thing that comes to our mind is when Joseph was selected to be the spouse of the Virgin Mary, Our Lady was in the temple and the suitors for her all put their staffs in the, in the, for the priest to see, to see whom God had chosen. And the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. Joseph's staff flowered. Isaiah had said, There shall come forth a rod from the root of Jesse, and a flower shall rise up out of his, of his root. This not only happened with the staff, with the flower, Joseph's staff was flowering, but of course, from the prophecy we shall see, from the rod, the root of Jesse, a flower shall but rise up out of his root. This is the blossoming of, of course, the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And Joseph was going to be the foster father. And what a wonderful life he did leave, live. So much so that we want to take a look at this life and see, enumerate some of the things that, we, that are his, are so important, certainly to the selection here, as he was the spouse of the Virgin Mary, she was in the temple betrothed, given to the Lord from her earliest days, and of course, highly sought by many men, and Joseph was selected by divine miracle, as it were. So we also see from his life what he, what he did, humble, a humble man, a hard worker, and of course, being selected to be the mother of the, uh, the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we know from Joseph when he was with Our Lady that she was with child and he was certainly un had great questions about that, but he was relieved in a dream. Do not fear Joseph because the child born of Our Lady is born conceived by the Holy Spirit. So that was a wonderful and heavenly answer to his his problem. Then, of course, Joseph, obedient to the decree, went with Mary when she was with child at the final mom moments of her, of her pregnancy to fulfill the, wor the word going to the city of David. And, of course, she had the great joy of seeing the child born, miraculously, a virgin birth, without any kind of suffering at all for, the, for Our Lady. And he heard the angels singing that night, glory to God in the highest. How joyful must have been that night when the angels were singing so, so much. Not just a few angels, but we can almost imagine countless angels. Who knows how many were there? I'm sure heaven emptied out, coming down to praise the Messiah, the Son of God. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth to men of good will. Then seeing the humble shepherds kneeling down, adoring the, the infant savior, and the th three kings coming from afar with all kinds of presents, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The bit of sadness coming into his life with the 
hope this killing of the holy infants again warned by an angel to lead to flee Nazareth, uh, Bethlehem because Herod had intentions of killing the child and of course the difficulties going on the tr flight to Egypt and the poverty in Egypt away from from Israel as a, a refugee as it were it's not all easy to be away from your home and then coming back and realizing that Herod was his son was uh, over Judea so he began he went to Nazareth and he had the joy of living in Nazareth with Je with Our Lady and Jesus. What a perfect holy family that is. Who could imagine the great joy that Joseph had with his beloved spouse, the holiest of women, in their domestic bliss in their house in Nazareth, and working with Jesus, the Son of God, so such an exemplary child, the tremendous joy in that family for 30 years or so, and then, of course, his death before, G before the public ministry of Jesus in the companionship with the consolation of having Our Lady and Jesus at his side. What a wonderful, what a wonderful blessing that was. So Joseph was truly an, an outstanding man, the greatest of saints, as it were. This is why he was selected to be the foster father of Jesus and the husband, the spouse of Mary. He's also related especially to the great patriarch, Joseph of Egypt. Joseph of Egypt was truly an outstanding man who was the, as it were, the prime minister. He was given all power in Egypt by the Pharaoh, all power, second in command, as it were. He had the power of the keys, as it, and he ruled with great honesty and goodness and the pharaoh had great trust in him so did all the people and they praised him because he was such a, a wonderful person a great diviner of dreams and wisdom beyond any other man of his time saint bernard compares the two saint joseph and joseph the patriarch of egypt St. Bernard tells us about the two Josephs. The first, quote, the first was sold by his brethren out of envy and was led into Egypt, thus prefiguring our Savior's being sold. The second Joseph, that he might avoid Herod's envy, led Jesus into Egypt. The first Joseph, faithful to his master and treated the Pharaoh's wife with honor. The second, too, was the most chaste guardian of his bride, the virgin mother of his Lord. To the first, Joseph was given the understanding and interpretation of dreams. To the second, St. Joseph, the knowledge of and participation in the heavenly mysteries. The first laid up stores of corn, not for himself, but for all the people. The second received the living bread that came down from heaven and kept it both for himself and for the whole world. So this comparison between these two great men certainly is very appropriate. Truly, these two Josephs were outstanding men. And of course, the second Joseph, the spouse of Our Lady and the foster father of Jesus, was a saint of saints. So we rejoice today and we go to Joseph. As they went to Joseph in Egypt, the Pharaoh said, go to Joseph. So we go to Joseph today in these times as he's the patron of the universal church. And he also appeared with Our Lady at the final apparition in, a, in three sets with the child Jesus and Our Lady in the third se segment of the apparition of October 13th. The Holy Family was there, Joseph blessing the world, as it were. And we go to him because we're, our world is in trouble. And we listen to him and his spouse, Our Lady, who said to pray and sacrifice for sinners and not to offend God. So we pray our rosary and we remember Joseph, especially, of course, in the joyful mysteries and the Annunciation 
and the visitation and the birth of Jesus, presentation in the temple and the loss of the child Jesus, all which somehow inv involves St. Joseph. He's there with Our Lady with the great joy that they had celebrating the mysteries in their son's life. So we rejoice today. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and foster father of Jesus. May the Lord bless you.